looks pretty good. Well, me and Jake are gonna be camping here tonight and we're gonna try to catch our own dinner. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of survival fishing techniques and we're gonna see if we can't uh, get something to eat. First things first, should we go find some bait, Jake? Well, the best bait for the fishing we're gonna do is earthworms. If you wanna find earthworms, go to flood plains just like this. You want wet, mucky soil. That's a good place to find worms. Just go and flip over logs and look under leaves. Oh, there we go. Bingo, look at these. Yeah, look at that. Those are those are great worms. Oh, there's oh that was a big one hiding. Look at this. We found the mother load. We need to find something to put these worms in. Alright. Woohoo. You wanna go find some more worms? Yeah. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, big right inside the the log. That's a good sign. You saw where oh yeah, there's oh there's a whole bunch right there. Oh, here, put them in there. Oh, good job, Jay. That is a great one. You got one? <laughs> got one. Oh, there's a big no. one. No. Oh, come on out. Come on out. Oh, yes. Nice one. That's a pretty good pile of worms right there. We got probably 18 worms. Well, we got our bait sorted. Now I'm going to make some fish hooks. I'm going to make some fish gorges, which is a primitive fish hook that you can make with a pocket knife. You can use almost any type of wood to make a fish gorge, but I like cane or bamboo or really hard woods. And let's see if we can find some in a uh, ha right here. Okay, We've got an old nasty piece of bamboo or cane. I like using bamboo or cane because it's pretty hard stuff. And it also, it, it breaks into these nice little strips. Okay, just like that, right? It's nice and easy to work with. Take a little piece like that. Not a job for people with fat fingers. Okay, so got a little piece like that. It's just kind of like a little teeny tiny toothpick with a notch in the middle to tie your string. Now I'm gonna mispronounce this fish gouge like a billion times in this video, but it's called a fish gorge. We're gonna go see if we can catch some bluegill with this. And I'm probably gonna break or lose a few, so I'm gonna hold on to this little piece of cane. Keep that with me. All right, next we're looking for a fishing pole, and I'm looking for something that's as long as possible and ideally green and flexible. walking back to camp here and I see something roll out there. We might have some decent fish. All right. Now if you only have a little bit of line you can tie it straight to the end but the best practice is to tie the fishing line to the handle and wrap it up to the tip. You want enough line that it gets down to about the handle. There you go, just use a little slip knot to tie the fish gorge right in the middle. Next, we're gonna need a fish stringer here. There we go, got a fish stringer. And I've got a cutting board for my bait. Now the most important part about fishing, whether you're using modern techniques or primitive techniques, it's picking the right location. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you're fishing in a spot that doesn't have fish, you're not gonna catch anything. The fish are also really affected by the seasons. Here in Virginia, in the wintertime, the fish tend to go deeper. And so catching fish with primitive techniques from shore, it gets really tricky. But here in the summer, it's not so bad. And in the daytime, most of the bluegill and panfish you're gonna find, they're in the shadows along the shore underneath trees. You go find weed lines or uh, the shadows of a tree, that's where you're gonna find the most fish. So right here, we've got a big tree leaning out over the water. I can walk out on that tree get a little bit more reach and you got this big shadow here of the tree is casting on the water and that's where we're gonna fish. So I'm gonna take the worm and I'm gonna cut them up into little pieces 
about the length of my fishing gorge. Because we're going to shove the fishing gorge inside the worm like that until it comes out the other side. Just got this little bit of worm with the fish gorge tucked inside and you want it so the two wooden spikes on either end of the gorge just barely sticking out. So what you do is you grab both sides of the fish gorge and then put a little tension like that and you got it perfect. The key is the fish has to swallow it. What happens is it goes down into the fish's throat and into his stomach and then when you put tension on it the fish gorge goes and pops out sideways and jams in the fish's throat. Fish gorges are not as effective as modern fish hooks. So you're gonna get bites and lose the fish about six times before you land a fish. You're gonna lose a lot of bait doing this. It takes a lot more time. I want a little bit better action. So let's go find something else. There we go, it ain't big, but there's one. Once these guys get hooked, it's really tricky to get them unhooked. Oh, there we go. Just put a little tension on the line, shove a stick down on his throat until you hit the gouge, and then kind of pop it up and down, up and down, up and down until the gouge comes out. Tiny little guy, let's see if we can do better than that. There we go, first fish on the stringer. Okay, let's try another spot, Jacob. A little bit bigger one, that's nice. There we go, found a good spot. I got this guy out of the water and he popped off the gorge. I might have to make a slightly bigger gorge because the size of the gorge has to fit the fish. You notice that all these fish are caught about the same size. It's a perfect size for that type of gorge. You want a bigger fish, sometimes you need a little bit bigger gorge. I think my gouge is just a hair too small and it's getting beat up pretty good. So I'm going to make another one real quick. You want to make these gouges as delicate as possible. Otherwise they won't sink when you put the worm on them. All right, there's the new gouge. It's about maybe 30% longer than the other one, but about the same weight. So we'll see how that does. Things kind of cooled down. We're going to try another spot here. Oh, this might be useful later on. Yeah, I'll take this too. Well, there we go. Gouge isn't too big. Still catch the little ones. Right, check it out. This one, the gorge went through his nose. That's a first. All right, there we go. Yeah, I've gotten better at baiting the hook. And now I'm getting a fish like every fourth strike. Whoa, not this. Whoa. Let me get the fishies. Oh, hey, Jay. another bluegill. Hey, Jay, look at that. Whoa. That's a nice one. Yeah. There we go. On the fish pile. All right, we got enough, right? Don't you think? Yeah, we got enough. We'll manage to turn a handful of worms into about a pound of bluegill. Took a couple hours, but uh, we're going to see if we can't uh, turn this into even a better dinner. That's some of the bluegill. Uh, how about? I think got some. Yeah, let's go ahead. Why don't you I think they're all dead. Now while I have to catch my dinner tonight, uh, Jacob does not. I brought plenty of snacks and food for him, which he has been enjoying thoroughly. It's one of the main reasons they come out with me camping. Well, we got it going on over here. Looks like we got a guest. Hi, Tom. You done with school? I just got off the bus and I ran home. <laughs> Come on over. We got plenty of dinner. Oh, we're eating that? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're cooking that up? We might have some other things for you, too. Good. Check it out, Tom. We tried all of these with the fish gorge. You want to try it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that looks awesome. Okay, well, here. Here's the fishing rod. Good, good luck, Tom. Thanks. You want to go fishing with him? All right, Tommy was really bummed that he had to go to school instead of joining us. So as soon as he got home from school, he rushed himself over here.
Got these 10 little bluegill cleaned up and we're gonna take all of this and turn it into more food. All right, got these two bottles we picked up. And I'll put these to use. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Put this other bottle to use. Brought a little packet of circle hooks here. You wanna use circle hooks because you don't need to set the hook with circle hooks. So these are really good if you're just gonna throw a line out there and forget about it. You can try to use a fish gouge to catch a catfish, but so far I have been unsuccessful in doing that. I have tried many times and had many catfish bite and I've yet to have one hooked and played. They just don't respond the same way to gouges. Now different species of catfish might do better like bullheads might work better for a gouge. There you go got a little circle hook right there. I like using bluegill heads because they're tough and they're hard to steal off the hook. So we're gonna Put this one up like that. Okay, it's got some nice weight to it. We're gonna chuck this thing. Yeah, it's not a bad cast at all. So I got this line cast out there and wrapped around this tree limb. So if anything comes, this tree limbs are gonna start shaking and I can see it from over by my camp. Plus having it attached to a limb will allow it to give a little bit so the fish is less likely to break the line. Less likely. Well, catfishing is best in the evening and the sun's about to set. So uh, this, is, this is a good time. We're just gonna let that soak and I'm gonna get the fire going and we're gonna start cooking up these bluegill. Uh oh, look at this. We got a second visitor. Hi, Nathan. I'm going to camp too. Awesome. And is your brother carrying your backpack for you? Yes. That's pretty awesome brother right there. That's super big brother stuff. Again. <laughs> oh. oh, look, catfish. Hey, Nathan, catfish, come here. Catfish, help me. Hi. Uh, look at that. Saw that. I saw that limb jerking all the way over there. Yeah. Hi, real it in? Here, you wanna? Yeah. You wanna help Tom? Here. Can I do it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now you gotta be you gotta be gentle with it and you gotta guide it around those snacks. See ya? Huh? Well, you help him. Oh dang it, it's already in a snack. Okay, let's let it sit for a little bit and see if it gets out. It's not a little snag, it's out there snagged like see the where the bubbles are coming up? See the bubbles are coming up? That's where it's at. Oh, I got them out. See we got them in the clear spot. Now get them in quick, quick. Don't let him get around the, in that grass. Now pull him this way. Pull him this way. Pull him this way. Okay. Uh, Look at this. Look, I caught that thing. Uh, wow. Look at that, Tom. Oh, that's a nice fish I got him in. Let's go. Uh huh. There we go. Are we going to eat him? Oh. Yeah, we're going to eat him. Most important part about fishing is putting your rig in front of fish. And in most situations, you can't do that unless you can cast. Worked like a charm. There you go, guys. That's a nice channel catfish. It took, what, eight minutes? Once you get dialed in, it's pretty easy. All right. Oh, I hear somebody. I think we got more visitors. Hi, Hi Becca. Oh. I'm glad to see you. Oh, Are you hungry? I got you dinner. Wow, that's decent. Wow. First, first we need to get the fire up, though. With some cedar bark. Guys, don't roughhouse in there. Put your boot on. Put your boot on. Oh, 
All right, need to get some water here. Okay, we got food for Mama. A couple mountain houses and some and uh, yakisoba. For, and food for me. And food for you. I, okay, guys, I'm gonna start I cooking up fish. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Why we told you not to, and then you ate it. Well, there we go, guys. Two lovely catfish fillets. Mom, you happy with your dinner? It's delicious. <laughs> Jacob, do you want some lasagna? Okay. Hey Tom, you want one? Mmm, delicious. Yeah. There we go. Getting the bones out of these guys pretty easy once they're cooked. Just grab the fins, the spines come out like that, splay it open, and take the spine out. I have a little few straggler ribs, two perfect chunks of meat. I'm gonna try some of this catfish. Mm. Nice and firm, I like that. Just some peanut oil and redfish seasoning. It's really good. But I understand. You like that sour apple marshmallow? This is over like my face. It's good. I like the chocolate. <laughs> you taking off, Becca? Yeah, I'm gonna put little boys to bed. I love you. I'm gonna miss you, babe. I'm gonna miss you. Have fun with Tommy. Thank you. Wait, can you take the leftovers home? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> love you. Be safe. Hey. Oh, Nathan. Nathan, you going back with Mama? I don't blame him. The allure of mother is strong. I love you, Tommy. Have fun with you. Mama. Mama. All right, guys, we'll see you in the morning. Well, we finished dinner and Mom, Nate, and Jake have headed back. I think it's time for uh, me and Tom to kind of button down the camp, put out the fire, and uh, just get ready for bed. You ready? Yes. Father and son time. Yay. <laughs> Father and son time. Yay. There's a new Star Wars movie on Disney Plus, and I promised him we get to watch it together tonight. You excited? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you are. All right, guys, it's late. I'm turning this off, and I'm going to see you guys in the morning. We got some cool cooking we're gonna do in the morning. I'll see you then. Well, it's about seven o'clock, we're up at it, and we've picked up where we left off in regards to Star Wars shows. <laughs> Rained a little bit last night, and we forgot to put our shoes away. Oh. Oh. Yeah, not too bad. Well, for, for breakfast, we're gonna have something kind of like campfire scones. I just got some bread flour and a little bit of yeast in here. We're gonna add some water. I think we had a little mouse bite the bag last night. I promised Becca I'd get back home early and I need about an hour to make this bread and yeast do its little thing. So we're gonna break down camp, head back, and uh, when we hit the one hour mark, we're gonna stop make breakfast. Found a random Nathan sock. Yeah, good. All these is all stingy. What do you think, Tom? Kind of a pretty spot to take a break and make some breakfast. What don't you think? All right, let's do it. Here, start with the little teeny stuff first. You know, <laughs> and then if he does, and if he, yeah. And it's
Oh, that's looking good. Tommy, are you ready to have your mind blown? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tom, would you like the first bite of this? Oh, tastes like a donut. That does taste like a donut. Mmm, that's good. You like that, Tom? It's so hot, it's totally burning my fingers. You can actually do this without yeast, and it just makes like a thick tortilla. And that's also really good. But having that little bit of fluffiness to it, next level. Mm. What do you think, Tom, best part of the trip? Yeah. <laughs> just a little Ziploc bag of bread flour, one packet of yeast, a little bit of water, knead it out to the consistency you saw, cook it in peanut oil, done. That's looking good. Oh. We got a little bit of extra, should we bring that home to mama? Yeah, she'd get upset if we found out we didn't bring it home. Yeah, you hold on to that. All right, Tom, should we go see mama? Yes. Let's go see mama. Well, listen guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Learned a little something about survival fishing techniques. If you guys want to see more videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. If we survive this hike. If we survive this hike. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.